There's a legend round here. A killer buried, but not dead. A curse on Crystal Lake. A death curse. Jason Borey's curse. They say he died as a boy, but he keeps coming back. Few have seen him and lived. Some have even tried to stop him. No one can. Jason belongs in hell. I'm gonna see he gets there. Jason, come on! Come and get me! It's me you want, remember? Forget. He's down there, waiting. Friday the 13th, boss. 
Ooh. What's going on? Oh, dude? God. We go all out for this, boys. We go all out. It's Friday, January the 13th, 2023. 2023. How's everybody doing? I'm lovely. How y'all? Doing good. We already got over 80 people checking it out already, boys. Just for the intro. Those that's intros. a pretty that's a pretty badass intro, yeah. I was digging it a lot. I really was. Yeah, I mean, I'm willing to sacrifice monetization on these Friday the 13th videos just because, you know, I mean, this shit's, it's classic. This music and and all that, so. I was wondering yeah. about that. As it was playing, I was like, there's no. Well, as long as, <laughs> as long as we don't get a copyright strike, which I already check it and everything, we're all good. And we're good with that. So how are you boys doing tonight? Have you done anything special this Friday the 13th yet? I worked all day, so I just got home. Ate, same, showered here. That's me. Yeah, that's, that's what did you do? It. Anything? No, I worked and I took a took a big dump all ago, and it's always good. I've got yeah. Friday the Thirteenth Part Eight playing on the computer up here, so I'm Ooh. kind of getting myself in the mood a little bit. It's the opening scene where they're kind of making out on the boat, and you can see that little boobage. It actually is just right now. I, I saw it. Yeah. Good memories, though, boys. And uh, tonight, it's going to be fun because this is the second of three rankings. This is Uncle Bill's ranking, which I don't think you've ever ranked the Friday the 13th before. A lot of people on YouTube have ranked multiple times. Same series multiple times. It's the first, even though we've been doing this damn show for damn near 20 years at this point. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Though. That's never happened before. I mean, I think that we kind of do that like offhandedly, but never anything concrete like this. So I guess the goal is eventually that we all rank the movies and like kind of shit on each other's rankings. That's the goal, bro. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys would have done it for me last time. So if, uh, well, if you guys didn't check that one out, just go to go back a little while. When was that? Was that like a year ago? You think? I think it might have been like February, maybe. Yeah, I like, think it was May. It was May the third. Oh, it was May thirteenth okay. last year. So the cool thing is, is there's actually two Friday the thirteenth in twenty twenty three. The next one is going to be freaking huge. It's going to be huge, huge. because. It's in October, guys. October the third, Friday, October the thirteenth. That just sounds like a killer. I think we should already we we should go ahead and put this show up, like put the page up and start hyping it now. <laughs> already, that, yeah. yeah. Is that going to be your list, the big one, the big show? Is I guess. Your ranking? If we're going to do that, rankings, and that's how, that's how he planned it out. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, like oh, you we'll can... let him do this list. I'll do it in October. I'm going to do the October, October. one. Yeah. Uh -huh. But we're I told you, Garrett. I told you he's always taking. He takes the fame, the infamy, the screeners, <laughs> all of it. <laughs> well, the, the screeners are few and far between anymore. That's true. But, um, it's going to be a fun time tonight. We appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, a lot of stuff you guys could be doing. You could be watching the movies yourselves and enjoying, or you know, you could be getting drunk or uh, eating CBD gummies like old Curly Jaws. I'm sure he's doing that too. He's probably got another show. dimension right now. And we appreciate the uh, $2 super chat, old Curly. And he was saying part eight was his favorite. So I, yeah. I kind of dig part eight a lot as well. So we kind of agree out. there. But uh, death metal elitist movie junkie John Suspiria Knight, the keggy. Bradley Taylor, wet movie one, Purry. Thompson Tom, putrid gore. And everybody else, 106 people already in here. It's going to be a fun show, guys. I think people are all amped up. They love, even though we've talked about Friday the 13th movies. You know when the, Garrett, I don't know if you realize this, the very first Friday the 13th special that we ever did. You know, the date of that, I remember it. Full circle, Bulls. It's, it's come full circle. What, the one that you and I did? No, the very first one Dead Pit ever did. Oh, I have no idea. Just to give you an idea on how long ago it was, okay? Friday, January the 13th, 2006 was the very first Friday <laughs> wow. the 13th. God. Spectacular, which you can still go get on Patreon. We had interviews did, on there. Did we have the Paul Crack interview? Is that the one with that Paul, one? Paul Crack, uh, uh, 
and for Danny and Nancy Palmer. That's sick. Oh, you know what? I do kind of remember that. Like they were like guests, right? Like they did like a spot or something. Yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's today is what is, what would it be? The 17th anniversary of that day. Wow. What in the world? That's killer. The world you guys have been around, man. <laughs> That's just ridiculous to even think about it. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, we're happy everybody is uh, joining us tonight and everything. It's going to be a fun show, guys. I, I mean, even though we've talked about these movies for years and years and years and years and years, maybe Garrett, not as much as us, but still, I'm sure we've all discussed these movies a bunch. This is my favorite franchise in horror. I don't think there's a, yeah. I don't think anybody could deny that. I mean, well, I don't know what how you guys think, but as far as like an overall franchise, like the Friday the Thirteenth movies are pretty hard to beat, top to bottom. They are. It's my favorite franchise. I think I said that in my ranking. It's just they're they're as much as they're similar, they're just consistent to me. Like there's none that like when I made this list before, I thought a lot of it was pretty challenging, especially between I think one through eight. Like any of those could have really you know, been anywhere and in, in a lot of the, the different, you know, rankings that we do. And I just feel like it's consistent throughout They're They're entertaining. You kind of know what you're going to get. They always have kind of unique characters. You can remember as much as they're so unique or as much as they're so similar, you remember which one is which very easily. And I feel like there's not other franchises that kind of are that consistent across the board. Yeah. I think if you compare like the Friday the 13th franchise to like, the Halloween franchise, Nightmare on Elm Street, like Texas Chainsaw, there's really no comparison. Like they're by far have the most, you know, decent movies of any of those franchises. Like once you get into like, especially some of the later movies of those other ones, like it gets real bad. You know, an interesting concept I was just thinking of. So kind of the height of the Friday the 13th franchise is those paramount eight that's what we always call them mm -hmm. where they've made them pretty much back to back every year of the 80s what do you think would have happened had they continued and made another one in 1990 do you think it would be right there there it would be the paramount nine it would be the same you know same formula and everything <laughs> independent filmmakers making their movies in canada or wherever the hell they're making them at how do you think that would have went I think so. I think it would have. Um, I don't like, I don't know how did Jason takes Manhattan do in the box office? Because to me, as a kid of that age, I remember that, that commercial and stuff being on a lot. Like I remember seeing a lot of hype for that movie, being a little kid and knowing that I was not going to be able to go see it. And I just remember it being like, so cool to me, like all the different spots that they were doing on TV. And uh, I just, I just don't know how it did in the theater overall, but it seemed like it was, pretty up there as far as the the backing behind it at the time yeah I mean, it had a lot of hype because i remember the same thing like i remember it coming out and everybody was like super hyped that it was you know in new york and yada 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 and all that stuff and i, I don't know how it did at the box office come to think of it I now was I, that the time when uh jason showed up on like arsenio as a guest was it around that yeah, that, that kind of movie? Movie? i'm pretty sure yeah it was yeah. part eight so i mean that alone has already given you a lot of publicity that <laughs> Jason showed up as a guest on Arsenio Hall. It just shows like how cool things were back then. I think they all made decent money, but like they, it was on a decline. So it wasn't making as, it wasn't as profitable as the one before. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I don't know what, what happened uh, shortly after that, I guess new line bought the rights to the, the franchise or at least to Jason, because they never did use Friday the 13th after that. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of an interesting history there. And, you know, it's been a long time since we've been given a new Friday the 13th movie, guys. It's been, what is it, 13, 14 years at this 2009, point? 2009, yeah. So, or wait, wait, wait. Yeah, 2009. Yeah, I think it was 2009. Yeah, yeah. you're right. So, Which, but, well, we'll get into that later. <laughs> yeah, we're going to well, talk about yeah. all of them because this is a show where Uncle Bill ranks them from, I guess... We're going to do worst to best. I think that's how we did it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Real quick, though, just to give you an idea, Friday Part 8 had a budget of $5 million and it made $14 million. So I don't know how yeah. that is like in relationship to the other, but, I mean, it basically tripled its profit. It Those movies were money. still, yeah, making quite a bit of money at that time. And that was the first one that I got to see in the theaters. 
uh, as a kid. I was like nine years old when that came out. Me too. Yeah. But okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Oh yeah. Sure. So number twelve out of a possible twelve films here. Is there twelve or is there there's, the first? No, there, there is twelve. 12. There's twelve. Yeah, if you include Freddy versus Jason, and I did. Um, so this is my least favorite, and I thought a lot about this, by the way. And like this list is not like what I consider. Have you probably... been drinking heavily, Uncle Bill? No. Why? <laughs> Alyssa Milano says you have. Uncle Bill's been drinking his. Oh, yeah. I wish I had been, but no, I haven't been drinking anything <laughs> except Coke. Um, He's doing Coke. So, <laughs> I had a lot of Coke tonight. <laughs> Coca Cola Classic. But with this list, I was like, I'm not going to try to like pick out like which ones are the best movies or whatever shit like that. I'm going to try to look at it like which ones would I watch now? Because having seen these movies a million times at this point, that's the only way I can judge them. Like, which ones would I most likely watch now? And which ones would I least likely watch? So the one that I would least likely watch at this point in time, and number 12 on this list, fucking Jason X. So that's, the, that's your least favorite. That's my least favorite. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. This is the cheapest looking, even if I take into consideration... Part seven, the cheapest looking of all the Friday the 13th films. I hate the way this movie looks. It looks like a Lionsgate movie or something like that from that time period. And I can just never watch it and get into it at all. Because every time I start to watch it, I'm like, this is like a sci-fi original stylish kind of like movie. There's no blood in it, really. I mean, there's a couple of decent kills. But other than the Uber Jason, which I will give you, is actually a pretty cool look. I hate this movie. I hate all the characters in this movie. I hate the way it looks. I just despise Jason X. I'm sorry for anybody that likes Jason When's X. When's the last time that you watched it, just out of curiosity? It was on uh, television at some point, probably like a year or so ago. And that was probably the last time that I watched it. But I know for a fact that just thinking back on these movies, and I've seen them all, you know, probably over 10 times each. This is my least favorite at this point. So what are your thoughts? I mean, <clears throat> again, I I kind of agree if we're if we're going that route. I'm, I'm actually scrolling down because I don't remember what my list was last time we did it. I'm just curious. Yeah, we need to compare that. I'm curious where too. I had that because, you know, when you really think about the whole franchise, I don't know what else you'd put at the bottom though. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I think I had to have put Jason X there. I'm thinking. Um, well, I mean, there's a couple of these, these last three, I could have like interchangeably kind of put at the bottom, but. And again, guys, I think you got to realize too, um, is that it's not necessarily saying that it's like God awful, but like when you do a ranking, something's going to go last. Right. So, yeah. You know, and I think that's where people sometimes, you know, when we do shows or we give lists, they think that you think you is the absolutely, you know, biggest piece of crap ever, but it, it may not be the case. You just needed to, you know, you need to put something somewhere. I was attempting to do a poll of which film is everybody's favorite in the chat, but you can only pick like four or five different options. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have 12 options, but anyway, people can let us know in the chat too. So Jason X though, man, like, I remember being crazy hyped for it when it came out because a lot of people don't remember that was a movie that was delayed. It was sitting on a shelf for a year, year and a half, maybe two years. Wasn't it? Did we see this movie together? I think so. I, I think we did. In the theater. Yeah. Um, and I remember liking it in the theater. That's the weird thing. Like, I think Friday the 13th movies, at least back then, if you had a good crowd, even the ones that are not that great would seem like they were amazing. And there was some good kills in That's true. Jason X. So I'll give them that. I thought. Because uh, this next one I'm getting ready to bring up definitely benefited from like a theater experience. <laughs> and when you go back and watch it, you're just like, God bless, man. <laughs> like it's, it's a tough like watch when you're actually like 
focusing on what's going on and concentrating on the plot and everything. And there's not like people screaming and, you know, kind of hollering around you to, to make it more enjoyable. But yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Somebody brought up the frozen face kill. That is a good, that's like probably one of the only good kills in it. Um, I just, I can't get past the whole look of the movie, like just how cheap it looks. And that just, and not that, not only that too, but just like all of those characters, the the space crew or whatever, are some of the worst, like most generic characters ever. And that's saying a lot if you look at like, look the, back at uh, all the generic characters in Friday the 13th. Uber Jason, though, I thought was a cool look. I thought that yeah. they did a good job with that. But yeah, I mean, the look of Jason X as a film, it totally looks like a made for sci-fi original movie. It looks very cheap. Um, I know it was Canadian as well. Like, I guess back in the day, maybe still to this day, it must have been cheaper than hell to make movies in Canada. Yeah, that's why Romero was doing everything up there, and a lot of directors that went up there and <coughs> was were doing all their films. Yeah, I think now, like in like Georgia, that way now, that's why they all like everybody does. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes yeah. on in Georgia and. I think uh, in Alabama the same way. It seems like there's a lot of stuff in Alabama too. No, you don't want to go down to Alabama. That's a bad idea. Garrett, what are you doing? You look like really concerned or you're still trying no, to find I'm, that I'm, list. <laughs> I'm going back to try to find that list. Um, <laughs> and I, I I know what I put. I put um, my last one was uh, Freddy vs. Jason. All right. So you ready for number 11? Mm. <laughs> oh, Let's do it. I, imagine it. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, this movie was huge, like hit in the th- in terms of people just marking out and going crazy in the theater over mm-hmm. this movie. This the plot of this movie makes absolutely no damn sense. It's got like twelve different plots to it, really. Not only that, but it has one of the worst interactions in any like horror film ever, which is the chick was it Kelly Rowland? Yeah, <laughs> Freddie's child. God Almighty, that scene is brutal to watch now. I thought it was bad then, but it's like She's try to watch it now. Stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I would agree. I mean, it's the the concept is great, but the execution was a little bit poor. I think. Well, the problem with this movie was is that nobody could figure out how to do it. Like there were so many different versions and drafts of it written, and finally, I think they just got to the point where they're like. You know, it's like a Frankenstein's kind of amalgamation of a bunch of different ideas and just Mm -hmm. like we have to make some money on it. So just throw it out there. And I'm sure there's a hundred different ways they could have done this. That would have been better. I just I've never. never I remember, though, distinctly like Carter mentions here. She called Freddie a slur. How dare she? Uh huh. Even for back then, the fact that she was this huge. And I'm surprised not that many people made the fuss about it because she was in this was when Destiny's Child was still a thing, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, th- I think that was the whole draw of it, really. That she and was nothing in it. was, yeah, nothing was really said then at all. And really looking back at it, it's kind of surprising. Yeah, uh, <laughs> definitely. I mean, it's wild. I, I think why I put this at my last one was, um, because I just don't like this Jason, this this version of Jason at all. Like I just think he was very stiff, just kind of a Frankenstein type monster. Like I, I think that's why I put that there. Just to me, Jason didn't do much or anything memorable in this movie at all. I mean, it was a Freddy movie. Jason had that one scene where he was on fire, but like I mean, he didn't really do anything. You just kind of walked, you know. You know what that reminded me of, by the way, that scene where he's on fire. You know the scene in the Princess Bride where they set Andre the Giant on fire and just kind of like <laughs> push him forward. That's <laughs> what they're he was he just, just he was just kind of walking like it's kind of big yeah. Frankenstein son of a bitch in there. Yeah. yeah. So Twitter didn't exist in 2003. So Wes Ray has a point. That's probably what it was. That's true. All too. this cr- crazy shit starts on Twitter or somewhere on social media on Tout. Also, and everybody's brought this up, but it kind of bears repeating too. What in the hell made them think that the the big thing that that Freddie should do is make Jason drown because he's afraid of water when he's like 
in every other movie, he's going, like, he walks directly into the water and like <laughs> just kills people, pulls them under water. Like, yeah, there's yeah. slug Dick Jason from part eight. Yeah. I, I, I mean, they don't, they've been doing that for years though. They just thought those movies don't exist in this world. Mm-hmm. It was they just one of the, them. one of the dumbest kind of plot lines ever, but and he turns it back into a little kid kind of, like part eight. I thought the look of Freddy was terrible in this too. I mean, I know we're just talking about Jason mainly, but it was the last portrayal of uh, Freddy Krueger from Robert England. And the, you know, for the time period, it should, I, I think it should look way better. <laughs> wait, wait, I gotta, put this, I gotta put this up. <laughs> he looked like Robert Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> Rock and roll, Rock and roll. Yeah. Oh my God. That's funny. Oh, uh, but yeah, Freddie Rich. I'm pretty sure everybody's seen Freddie Rich Jason because it made like $300 million or something crazy when it came out. Yeah, it made a lot of money, but I think like hardcore fans, none of nobody really champions that movie. Have you know, have you guys noticed? As that? You, I mean, you really shouldn't. Jason you know? X has its fan base though, mm. and but Freddie versus Jason, not so much. So, number 10. Um, I would have put this at the bottom of my list probably a couple years ago, but I, after seeing it a couple more times, it sucks, but it doesn't <laughs> suck as much as those other two. Uh, <laughs> this is the the remake, Friday the 13th, 2009 version. Um, I'm sorry, but fucking Derek Mears running around with an IGA bag on his head for the first time. <laughs> like, what the hell? 20 minutes of it just... He got it just doesn't work for me, brother. Yeah, he got some frozen gonna, chicken before he. <laughs> did why are you gonna be like that, Derek Mears? I thought he did a fantastic job as Jason. He did, but that is so stupid. Like whatever they had him in, it literally looks like a shopping like bag over his head for like the first little while, and then he comes out and he kind of looks like gorked out Andrew from fucking Hell Night. Um, when they actually <laughs> take the the bag off his head, I. <laughs> Just I don't know, man. Did they have some sort of subplot in this too, where Jason was like growing marijuana or something? Like it's been a yes, while. Yes, and that always confused me too. Like they, the kids at the beginning of the movie were going in there and they were searching for some sort of marijuana patch. That was what the <sighs> beginning of the movie was. Mm-hmm. That's how strength. And then, <laughs> and then he, he like sets up traps for him and and threw the marijuana like almost like somebody around here. So I don't know, like, but the biggest problem with this movie to me was the dialogue and just the script was freaking. Hor- and actually, for two thousand nine, this had like a horrible cast of like woke kind of nonsense in it, and it was just awful. One great thing that you get out of the Friday the Thirteenth remake, though, is you get to see Willa Ford bear it all. I remember she was kind of popular there for like a year, like one year she was in a bunch of stuff. And then I don't know what happened to her. Yeah. She's probably in a trailer park somewhere at this point. She's talking about the good old days, but yeah, also in this, Jason has like a intricate tunnel system, like GI Joe, that tunnel rat guy. Like he, that's the only thing I didn't like about that. I think is like that whole storyline that wasn't explained really. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like that. Like I actually would have rather preferred. Like I actually thought when they came out with that movie, because Rob Zombie's Halloween did so well <laughs> that I think that was like maybe they'll do like young Jason in the woods, like killing animals and making traps as a little kid to trap the animals, and then you see him grow up and he kind of uses the same format for like catching people or whatever's in the woods there. And I thought that's where they were going to go with this, and they didn't. And I was kind of a little bit bummed about that because it just kind of happened you don't really have any explanation of why another thing that's very and shit. very interesting because we said this was released in february of 2009 coming up on what is it how long ago was that like 15 years ago at this point what the hell 14 yeah. 15 14 years? yeah 19 million dollar budget it made 92.7 million dollars and they didn't immediately try to make a sequel what the hell yeah. what's up with that what's up with that uh that's that's the the derek mears like curse kind of like i feel so bad for that dude because i feel like i've, I've met him and he's like seems like the nicest 
He is guy. Yeah. Like he's so personable. He's so you know thankful. And, you know, he was so excited about this role because I had met him right before this came out. And I even said to him, like, hey, this is my wife and I's favorite French. Oh, no, my, she was she's a nightmare girl. I said, all right, this is, you know, it's my favorite franchise, blah, blah. I said, you know, I, I'm looking forward to see what you do. And he had like the picture of him kind of coming out of the water that I got signed. And I just thought it looked he looked really good as Jason. He's like, oh, he's like, I'm excited, man. He's like, you know, it's just like a dream of mine to be part of this new franchise. And like in his head, he thought like he was he was golden for a while, you know. He and I think been. everybody else did too. And then it yeah. was gone. And then that was out. And then all of a sudden he got, he was swamp thing. And that thing was cut, like not even like a full season in. And I'm like, man, like this poor guy can't catch a break. He's getting these huge roles. Like I am swamp thing in this new series. Like he probably thought he was going to be in it for seasons. Right. So mm -hmm. um, I just kind of feel bad for the dude because I feel like he, he does a great job. He's got a great look and he always ends up kind of things just kind of don't go his way. The lead in this, though, I guess the the femaleness, Danielle Panabaker, uh, is another one that's completely fell off the face of the earth. Last movie she was in was eight years ago. At this point, and speaking uh, of, speaking of which, I don't know. This just brought that back to my mind. I read an article a couple of days ago where Rooney Mara was talking about that she almost quit acting after she did the Night Running on Street you remake. Can't blame her. I just thought that was so cool. She was just like, God, that movie just killed me. I was like, yeah, it killed us too, Rooney. Damn it. Being that shit. Now, let but me anyway. ask you this. Speaking of her, are you guys, are you guys a fan of uh, Dragon Tattoo that she was in? Yeah. I don't, I've never I, seen I that. I loved that movie. Never I thought seen that was it. a fantastic remake of, of that old movie. And I, and she's, she plays the lead and, Man, it's so good, and I and I never really hear anybody talk about that anymore. And I'm like thinking to myself, it really still holds up, uh, very very effective. That that version, like I know a lot of people always think about the original, which is great, but that remake was pretty top notch. I think I watched it one time, and I remember really liking it, but I didn't even mm -hmm. realize it was the same girl that was in the Elm Street remake yeah, a yeah. couple of years earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a um, lot of really good people in that remake. It's just as a whole, that movie was. God awful, stupendous, stupendous. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> indeed. Well, we're we're getting up there, guys. Over 160 people checking us out right now. Hey, live. thank so you, everybody. Perfect Are opportunity you... <laughs> to thumbs up the video, fondle it, super kick it. Yeah, snap that leg like Shawn Michaels did. Kick Marty you know, J that, through a window. That, that's yeah, how that Shawn ended up. Nightmares. Injured. He injured himself, smacking the shit out of his leg. So now I think since there's like 160 people in here, we should kick it up a notch with this next pick, because at number nine, you pussy. <laughs> How dare you? I you. I don't give a damn. Oh I know that everybody in here is going to freak out, but freak I, out. I freak, freak out. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know you're my friend. You've already, <laughs> you've already pissed off Rio, man. Or Rio, you sorry. said you loved Elizabeth. Elizabeth. <laughs> man. Friday the 13th part six. I hate this movie. <laughs> like People always go on and on about this movie, about how it's, you know, it was a return to form and they love the, you know, the universal monster feel of it. And the director run Vanderhoff off. man. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's just to me, it's like, it's boring. I'm sorry. Like it just doesn't have the same appeal. Like to me, a Friday the 13th movie should be an exploitation style movie. And to, this thing was like to, MTV, Jason. To make it Rock like, roll. yeah, to make it like, you know, a stylized kind of version of that. I just, I don't like it. God. And I haven't the ever. That's fucking explode. <laughs> yeah. They're angry. They'd be I haven't, if you were there. I haven't ever really liked it, but it wasn't until recently that I realized how much I hate Friday 13 part six, because number one, it's got one of the worst main, like final girls in it. Tell me one thing that she does in this movie that's well, like at all not, memorable. In this one, it's not really a final girl, though. It's mm. come on, she, <laughs> you're, 
You're gonna sit there and talk like that to Ratty Jarvis right now? Are you gonna do that? And then, Garrett, I, I'm just curious. Did you purchase that for the Tommy Jarvis for the costume, show? or you just happened to have it? I just happened to have it. You know, just happened <laughs> to have it. Felt like it was a perfect time to uh, to break out the Tommy Jarvis jean jacket and uh, you, you meet know, Tom say Matthews justice for show. Jason Lives. You made him at a convention coming up and say, <laughs> "What the fuck you doing, Gary? You pussy trying to steal my style and clothes?" <laughs> <laughs> oh god he does the sh- same shit return to leave a dad too which makes that great as well you, yeah. leave t- you yeah. mean when you mean with dad <laughs> Tina, darling. Oh, my <laughs> oh my god i want oh your brain oh. you leave tom matthews uh, alone, will you? <laughs> that's, a, that's a perfect impression by the way holy shit oh. um I don't know what else to say about it, man. I don't like Universal Monster uh, Jason. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I agree it has some good music in it. Tom, I, the final scene is good. I would definitely give it that. I just don't like this movie. Well, the interesting thing, though, is coming up on Sunday the 15th, we are doing a community commentary for the first time ever. Patrons and Uncle Bill, we're going to make him do it. We're going to do a watch along. Of Jason Lee, Friday the Thirteenth, which I happen to like. I mean, I don't love it. I think it hasn't aged well. But that, I think that was the first Friday the Thirteenth movie that I ever saw as a kid. Part six. Part six. It holds a special place in my heart just because that the opening segment in Part Six. I thought that was the coolest thing when I was a kid. Well, this is real bad right here because. He's Vince got the McMahon. Rag on. <laughs> he's gonna sell the whole company, man. If I keep talking about part six, yeah, yeah stop talking about it, man. You're gonna ruin everything. Jesus. Tom Matthews. <laughs> he's funny. <to> Tom Matthews. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> listen, oh, all all of a sudden, like, Vince. like, listen, no you joke though. Sad, but my movie. <laughs> I want to hear how this come out on SmackDown. He's gonna be like, "Hey, Roman, you're pussy." I want to hear how this plays out because I don't know if anybody remembers when we did the Sean or the Tom Matthews interview. But when we did it, he was in George Clooney's house. Yeah, because they were they're like really good friends. So I'm just curious, like, see, how would that play out? Like, I mean, you know, the fact that George Clooney and Tom Matthews being friends and everything would that be? uh, Hey, George, I don't have anywhere to I don't have anywhere to stay for the night. Can I come and hang out on your town? Oh Jesus. Well that's how he, maybe that's come how on, he knows George. Vince. <laughs> maybe he met Vince oh. through Stacey Keebler, and that's kind of how the connection happened. <laughs> oh my god, dude. That blew me away though that I mean of all the people, Tom Matthews, like best friends, George what, Clooney. Didn't he say he was like, he was house sitting and taking care of George's dogs or something like that? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> Did he yell to the dog, come here, you boy. <laughs> come here, George's <laughs> dog. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> you so if, if you hated that pick, then you're probably, everybody here probably really hate this next pick too. But, you know, I like I said, I'm going by what I would watch. Not necessarily what the best film is, but my next pick, which is uh, number eight on the list. Oh, we're already up to number eight. Uh, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding. I'm just trying to piss Holy people off. Holy! I'm not. Bro. I'm really not trying to bro. piss anybody off. I think that was like my number one. I think. Like. Holy! This is one of the most overrated Friday the Thirteenth films. Because to me, it has like the most stereotypical kind of bullshit cast. It's got the Cheech and Chong characters in it. It's got like the wacky, like Larry Zerner character in it. Not to mention the fact that you can't watch this movie in 3D because it looks like shit. (sighs) And the 3D effects in it that you can see completely take you out of the movie because, like, let's. The The Yolo? Come on. <laughs> the the freaking um 
one that always got me was the eyeball. Paul Crack casino, the eyeball where you can see the string and everything that leads down. It's like, man, come that on. Was, uh, that was the first Friday 13th movie I ever saw. Was that one? That's probably the one that I've seen the most, I would think. I, I used to watch this like on a, I think I recorded it off HBO and I burnt the hell out of it playing it. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of baffled by this one. I don't I don't I don't know <laughs> He's if a changed I, man, Wes. You know, I just don't I don't ever watch it. And the times that I do watch it or I catch it on something, I'm just like, this is just not. I mean, r- granted, Richard Brooker's great in it as uh, as Jason, and it's the yeah, first I mean, time. I think that's the creepiest Jason ever. Like it just it just something about it. I remember that scene as a kid for the first time watching that and seeing him up in that window with the old mask on. I almost shit myself. She was uh, uh what if somebody <laughs> call him? Um oh god, I wish I could remember what somebody called the look of like when he takes the mask off in this. It was great. Danny somebody Campbell else, though is yeah, one of the right. I think she's one of the worst uh final girls for sure. Like she was awful, a horrible actress, even for a slasher movie. Yeah. Bradley Taylor, I I do like his performances. Jay. I'm not saying that I don't. I'm just saying that as a whole, like I never now enjoy you know. watching this movie. Now it wasn't Porky Pig that was it. <laughs> that he looked like Porky Pig without the mask. <laughs> <Hey. She does. laughs> oh god, yeah. Um, oh, now you pissed Vince off. <laughs> yeah, and then there's the other, there's the other thing where, yeah, it was. yeah. It was. Where there's this that is, whole subplot. It's the Steve's where, favorite. Uh, yeah. Friday so the 13th movie. Maybe that's him because he's bald. Maybe that is Steve under the mask. <laughs> that's <laughs> Steve Jason. <laughs> he's trying to get that girl like in the woods. <laughs> Brandon, thank you for the super chat. He says the second film legit scared me. Uh, there is someone in the room. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Scariest porky pig ever. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, there's a couple of different designs <clears throat> of Jason, though. There was one that uh, Stan Winston did that they ended up not using. Isn't that right? I it know. seems like I had heard something like that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think like, he had done well, it first and they didn't like it. So they got somebody else to do the, the Porky Pig Jason. The classic story about this, too, is that, that, that there's that missing scene in the... <laughs> in, <laughs> Rob, what's Robin Long talking about? <laughs> what? <laughs> Garrett, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love my pets too, Robert. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Just in case you want to go wonder. This shit's going off the rails quick. Oh, my. Ryo God. says oh. that uh, the Stan Winston yeah. makeup is in the silhouette in the intro segment. Okay. Oh, really? Vince said he wants wants Uncle Bill replaced with Bruce Pritchard. That's right. You got to bring Bruce Pritchard back. (laughs) Oh, Johnny Johnny Ace, bring him back. But no, it's got the scene where like the 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 lead girl gets uh, decapitated, gets her head cut off by a machete. That scene's missing from the film, but there's stills of it that people always talk about, like to the day to this day. Um. Which I would actually kind of like to see that because she's super annoying in this in this movie too. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's, I I'm glad that I'm warming everybody's heart with these picks and everybody's really on board with my opinions of these I movies. I like the three D and Friday the Thirteenth Part Three. I mean, it's a it's very gimmicky, but I think it works. I actually watched it in three D a couple of years ago. It may work as a 3D film. I don't think I've ever seen a good 3D version of it. But as a 2D film, that 3D shit is super annoying. Like, well, I think there's some reason, too, they can't properly remaster it because of it, how it was filmed in 3D. I wish I could f- see a real good one. Like, if a theater could figure it out. And I would love that, man. Like, Because you're right, there really isn't a real good way. Even They've tried, but I haven't found one that's worked. No. Well, the last one that Scream Factory did does work. Um, but you have to have, again, who has the actual 3D TV? I watched it on a 3D projector. Um, and I think it's the same, I don't know, monoglyph 3D or whatever the hell they call it. It's the same as they did in the movie theater the, with the shutter glasses and shit. Mm. That's really the only way <clears throat> to make that halfway decent. Yeah. 
So wait, were you, so they they did it with the box set with the real 3D, like the the new version, right? Like they, I have a 3D TV, but I have like a um, it's not real. Maybe it is. I don't know. It's right. an LG, so, but like you can turn anything 3D kind of thing. Yeah, but that's like a game. Like that's what the studio does with a lot of these movies. They want to make more money. They're like click a switch and say all right well it's ninja turtles is right in so that's why i'm not sure if even work on that tv that i have so what worked for me is is it was a 3d projector and it had active shutter 3d glasses so that means that they have to be like battery powered or whatever oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I, the passive 3d i don't know if it works as good on it but that's how i watched it and i was my mind was fucking blown man i'm not even mm. kidding like i don't i don't normally even put over 3d that much i i think it's more annoying than anything but this is seriously like you're kind of and it's stu- awesome it's stupid shit i mean most of it is like you know she's she's taking the clothesline pole and it looks like she's trying to poke you in the face with it or whatever but mm-hmm. it really works hmm you remember when we actually got i think it was the dvds wasn't it the dvds they first started putting the 3d glasses yeah, it was like in that addition with like the the red cover like the lenticular thing. Yeah, yeah and we tried to watch that and i was like god oh, almighty like it didn't work at all like <laughs> they gave you i think the red and blue glasses right at the yeah, time. yeah 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 actually came in and, and that's not even how it was released in the like they just gimmicked that up i don't even i really don't know even how they did that so yeah that never worked. but anyway i just i'm just like listen I'm really glad that everybody's so supportive of my list, though. This is really going well (laughs) so far. But number number seven is, where's it at? And this one I think people will be a little bit more happy with. Uh, My number seven is Jason Goes to Hell. Well, I think they're mad that the other ones are behind it. But the only person I think, well... Ken Levels is probably that was like his number one, I think. So he's probably kind of mad that it's not up there a little more. I it, maybe it's just me, but the fact of the matter is with this movie, like I don't think the director knew anything at all about what he was doing, and that kind of makes it better for me somehow. <laughs> like because he's putting characters in it that don't have any business being in the Friday Thirteenth film, but kind of work. Um, the guy I can never remember his name, who's like the the cowboy. He was in the X Files. Stephen Williams is that his name? Yeah. Who's in this? He's I like remember his name, yeah. going around breaking people's fingers and all this stuff. The opening of this movie I love too because I thought that was really kind of a unique way to open the film with you know where for once Jason is stalked and the FBI is behind it and they blow him up and all that stuff. Now, granted, when his spirit starts like leaving his body and like. His, all that bullshit. It's I thought that the um, the marketing behind it, that New Line, I remember the TV spots and the poster and everything, even though ultimately that artwork, the silver mask and all that shit was never in the movie at all. It was kind of just a, a marketing thing. But I think that they did an excellent job mm-hmm. promoting that movie. And I saw that thing twice in the movie theaters, 13 years old, um, and loved it then. I mean, I, you know, as far as the new line Friday the 13th movies go, I think it's the best one. I yeah. do too. I mean, it's got a lot of somebody else mentioned this on there too. Of all of the Friday the 13th films, aside from maybe part four, it's got some of the best gore in it, especially if you watch the unrated version of it too. So, I mean, KMB was behind the effects in it, so it's pretty amazing in that way, too. Which, if you're, I mean, why the hell are you watching a Friday the 13th movie, if not at least for partially for the gore? Mm-hmm. So, which some of these other movies that I mentioned prior to this don't really have that good of gore. I, was, I always remember hoping that his mask was chrome. For some reason, at that age that I was at, I thought that was, like, so killer, like, back then. Now, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm kind of fine with him not having it but i remember watching looking at that poster and thinking how sick it was and wondering what the hell is this thing coming out of the mask and i remember the the vhs tape too because that was one of the early like horror movies that was released unrated on vhs and when that came out i mean kids like my age my buddies and everything 
were eating that up. They were so excited. Oh, what could they have? They added stuff back in there that was too hardcore for the for the theaters. So that was one of the early ones that I can recall that did that. Yeah. But it didn't do that well at the box office. I was looking it up here. No. Um, it just made a little bit more than Friday the 13th Part 8. So the budget, oddly enough, the budget on Jason Goes to Hell was only $3 million and it made $15.9 million. Somehow, the budget of Part 8 was 5 to $5.5 million. It made $14.3 million. What did they spend on Jason Takes <laughs> I guess it was maybe like being in Manhattan for one day or whatever. I have no idea. I'm like, it was on a damn set, like a closed yeah. set. I don't know. And that tent know. scene was freaking killer. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, there was a couple of really cool effects. Like I always thought that the, the part in the diner where he like elbows the woman and her face, like you know, her mouth caves in or whatever. That was a really cool scene too. And Leslie Jordan, somebody mentioned he's in it as well. Like, he always plays kind of crazy characters like that, yeah. but okay. So that's, I Jason. also thought Jason goes to hell always like, it looked like it was filmed like a, like an X files episode or something like that. It did. It, it does kind of look, look like, like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, I didn't really think about it, but you're right. It does kind of look like an X files episode. <laughs> uh, Maybe it's the same cinematographer or something. Who knows? So, Jason goes to hell. It's Vince's favorite. I hate to do this, but I'm sure some people are going to shit on this one, too. Oh, no. I used to feel a lot better about this one, too. But then, like, after rewatching it, like, a bunch of times, this used to be probably my second favorite. But I just, it could have been so much more than what it is. So, my next one, Don't do uh, it. I'm going to do it, is Carrie versus Jason. Oh, okay. Um, I thought you were going to do another one. Okay. I, I mean, again, you got to look at where we are. We're like probably over halfway now. So, it's eight, right? Is that eight or seven? No, I think that's six, isn't it? Isn't this six? Hell, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think so. I think, there's only, I think there's only yeah. five left. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. So I love that. This is the one I remember most on VHS from when I was a kid. Like I probably watched this a hundred times on VHS back in the day. I love this movie. I thought the idea behind it was killer. I still think the idea of it's kind of ingenious, like Carrie versus Jason and all that. And like at some of the end sequences and stuff, uh, except for the part where she brings back her dad, which I still don't really understand what the hell any of that was about. But um it could have just been like so much better if they would have just let Beekler do the effects that he wanted to do. That's the biggest problem with this movie. It's so kind of chopped pieces. Um, but I still like it because it's a real like exploitation look to the film. And that's the way that these movies should be, in my opinion. Like they shouldn't look stylized and glossy and they should be kind of down and yeah, dirty looking someday good. we can get that movie the way it was intended it's sad that that's that we've never really got that i think that that footage exists i mean you would think that a studio wouldn't throw anything like that away but it's probably they don't have i had heard i think don may we were talking to him that a lot of that stuff that paramount keeps in the vaults is just a mess so if it exists, it would involve someone searching it out and, and trying to find it that it could take weeks or months to do. So who knows if, if that would ever happen, but I think that ultimately it would benefit Paramount if they could get it and put it back together, people would go, can you imagine just a single release, a 4k, of Friday the 13th part seven, the un the never before seen uncut version. I mean, that would, I would buy that in a heartbeat, man. That would be amazing to see that. And that the footage is, um, is on like YouTube. Like a lot of it is, but it's just the quality of it is pure shit. Like you can't see really any, you can see kind of like what was intended, but you can't really like 
see a lot of the, yeah, the gory VHS copy or something. Yeah. I wish to God though that they could do something, and there's still a chance that eventually somebody will find something that's out there, you know, oh, yeah. somewhere. So look think, at Martin, man. I mean, that took 40, yeah. 50 years. Yeah, I think eventually they may find it. I mean, I don't know how long it'll be from now, but I think that that exists. That's still around somewhere in a vault. Um, it's just kind of lost. But part seven, I'm like you, like that was one of my favorites as a kid. But now it's one that I never, ever really want to go back and rewatch for some reason. Yeah, there's just not a whole lot to it other than like the main, which I give uh, Laura Park Lincoln a lot of credit to, though. I liked her in this mm -hmm. quite a bit. But other than that, I don't know, eh. give a shit. Eh. Part seven. So, and this is weird because this very cool be poster for part seven, though. I always like, oh, yeah, very well, cool. oh, Fr and Friday has all great posters, those those VHS tapes, man. Like, some of the best freaking artwork ever. I will Simple, say this, but, like, though, super effective. I we didn't mention this, but I will say this like, I think that the look of Jason in this movie is probably like one of my favorites, like the especially with the mask at the end and everything, too. <sighs> <clears throat> Although he looks Dinosaur. like a boglin at the end when his mask comes off, like the hockey mask. He does yeah. kind of look like a boglin. <laughs> How was it when again? They say, like, he said he was like a dinosaur, Jason, or something. Somebody <laughs> <laughs> he turns into a dinosaur. <laughs> Shit. Now, let I'll me ask you, you guys this, and I think we've probably touched upon this before, maybe even on the one that we did. But um, when it comes to Friday the 13th as a kid, now, did it ever bother you about the changing of looks for him? What did you, what was your mindset with that? No, it never, like, that never really even entered my mind when I was watching these movies growing up. Like, it wasn't until much later I started caring about what they look like, like, in terms well, of. What's interesting is that for me, I felt like as a kid that his change in look was just based on him rotting more, battle damage, um, what the Jesus. <laughs> hey, guys. hey guys. Um, that's kind of what I always did thought about it when I was a kid. Like I was like, oh, you know, the the this mask is damaged from this other movie, and then he was getting more rotted away. Like the looks changed, but to me, they always kind of felt similar, just just more rotted away and old. I feel like I got more upset that Michael Myers' mask was always so different when technically he could technically have gotten any new mask at any time, but for some reason, that bothered me way more than like Jason's looks. Like well, to I me, like, remember, I felt uh, like it was in continuity. For some the reason, the VHS yeah. covers of Halloween four and five, and being like, well, "Where is that mask at?" It's right. never, <laughs> you know, what yeah. you get, you get like a fucking clown Michael Myers mask in part four. But... <laughs> <laughs> I always was really bothered by like in Halloween two. Like, doesn't he go back and like it's in his old house or something and it's been there it's like underneath a fucking toilet or uh, something like that and the mask is all ruined and he puts it back well, that's on in, it. i mean i know for a I'm, fact that's in the rob zombie one that's what um, i mean the rob zombies oh yeah, yeah 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 but part four they actually yeah in in halloween actually he actually grabs a new mask anyways from the, that like shit shit store or whatever like halloween store or something it looks like so a dime store think. mask at least I'm hey yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, remember in part five where he grabs that one mask out of there that has absolutely fucking nothing to do with anything going on? It's like a gangster mask or something. Like a oh yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> riding around yeah. the truck with it. Yeah. <sighs> Those movies. <laughs> anyway, we're up to the top five though. Yeah, Ooh. top five. You want to take some uh, comments and questions? And yeah, stuff? go ahead. Wes Ray says that he watched them out of order as a kid. So I guess none of the details we was talking about really bothered him as far as the look. And Mel is in here. What's going on, Melody Felcher? Creepy dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor. No, that's the keggy. I can't read. Uh, Friday the 13th, part two, three, and four are the best for me. So no love for the first one. <laughs> And some trivia there. Friday the 13th, part seven is the first movie Kane Hodder played as Jason. Yep. 
Gene Siskel is back in here. Welcome, Gene. He's visiting from hell tonight. Uh, Uncle Bill. <laughs> God damn. He, uh, he wants to know if Uncle Bill is going to be on Chatterbait later so they can uh, play catch up, play something else. Uh, I think that's Victor under that disguise. Mm hmm. I like this other. I like, I like this comment from that horror critic. It's pretty simple. <laughs> Dear what Uncle Bill, on? what are you on, buddy? I'm just. I. Orcs in area. I just can't believe that people really don't enjoy this <laughs> ranking. I really thought I was going to make a lot of friends from this ranking. These movies. Number five is Uncle Bill's favorite, according to he thinks that he might like, you know, a new beginning the the most. Ooh. Wanda this world wonder, wonders what Uncle Rad's ranking is. <laughs> we might do that. That might be the one next time we'll do Uncle Rad's ranking. <laughs> yeah. Carlos, don't. Yeah, don't look up chat. Uh, uh, please don't. I don't want to. All right. So continuing on, we're down to the top five. I think so, I know what his favorite is, but I think he might surprise me. But uh, let's let's see what we got. Uh, well, we'll see. I'm pretty sure that the order of this will probably surprise people. I don't know. Um, number five on the list is one that I used to like despise quite a bit, but has grown on me a lot over the years. Um, and that is Jason Takes Manhattan. So, like... Okay, for like a longest time, it was really just about, you know, most of it takes place on a boat, yada, yada, fucking yada. Like, not a lot of it takes place. But this is, to me, like a really good version of Jason, uh, except for when he turns into yeah. uh, whatever the hell that is at the end. A rotting pumpkin. Toxic waste turns him into a pumpkin-headed child and whatever that shit is. But before that... It's actually like a really good kind of final Paramount film. It's not, you know, it, I used to think that part seven was a lot better, but now I th I'm actually thinking that, that this movie might eclipse a little bit. If for nothing else, for a couple of scenes, including like the boxing scene mm -hmm. and, you know, a, a couple of the, uh, the scenes with, for some reason, the pervy teacher that I, that, whole subplot always confused me. So was he a pervy teacher or was he not? Because like she sets him up and then he comes into the room and he's kind of like taken aback by it, but he's not, he doesn't run away or anything, but it never really oh, kind of would have went there. He would have. Yeah. Went there, totally. You kind of get the impression that maybe he was just a perv, like all going all the way back to with Renee. What's her name? The main, the lead character, whatever. Greeny. Yeah. Uh, Darkest Side of the Night song on the intro is killer. Says yeah, Stuntman Mark. Song. I agree, too. I think that's yeah. one of the best. Um, yeah, so I'm very nostalgic for Part 8. So my, I mean, I can give you a spoiler alert for my list. Part eight's going to be high up on my list. Because I like it quite a bit. I even have, I'm watching the DVD right now. Check this out. How rare is this signature? The director. Oh, of yeah. Front, part eight. Wow. Rob Hedden signed it. It was one of the through the mail deals back in the day. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to really like about this. One of like my all time favorite scenes in any Friday the 13th movies when he's walking through like downtown New York and he just punk kicks the fucking boom box. I and have then... that boom box. Oh, really? I bet uh, that thing's a collector's item. Uh oh. Here it comes. I wonder if the song that he's playing when he kicks the boombox, is that a real song? That'd be a cool one to find. That would be. He's it's like a rap song seven. or something, isn't it? Oh, shit. What the hell? I had a boombox exactly like that, man, when I was a kid. Oh, tell me baby. that, tell me that it lights up, Garrett. Tell me that it actually like lights up when you play it. Uh, I, to, I think I'd have to plug it in and charge it or something, but yeah. yeah. Uh, my goal is to eventually maybe to get – I was I was thinking to get hotter to sign it. But uh, I don't know. I haven't done that yet. Or you could yeah. also use batteries. That's what we did back in the day. Those big D cell yeah, batteries. Yeah, that's what it needs some. I don't have any batteries in there. It's got those big bad boys. And it's got a plug in the back that like there's a door. And when you open the door, um, there's like a plug that I can plug I, in. I don't know if you remember it back in the day. If you had one of those. That 
those fucking uh, boom boxes would drain those batteries like oh, within yeah. a couple of hours. They'd be the big suckers. Oh, yeah, because the like D's, 60. they were all, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, like, that's the closest thing you could get to like a car battery that'd last a while on those shit. But no, <laughs> not on those boom boxes, man. Those those died pretty quick. Especially in the ones like that I had, I think would have been like the early 90s, where like it it had the lights sync up with the music. And so like you'd be playing the music and then the lights would like be like, you know, kind of going with the rhythm and everything. So that would eat up your batteries in like an hour. Yeah. You had like an hour talk. TV ain't no big deal. Is that a little You know what else was a battery killer was Sega? Uh, dr- uh, what is the little one? Oh, Game Not Gear. Game. Yeah, dude. Game that Gear, thing man. Brutal. I used to have, it had like, it used like six or eight AA batteries and <laughs> it would be one. gone like that. So, I get Nomad. Do you guys remember the Sega Nomad? I never had that. I never, I didn't, I don't know what the Nomad is. So that man. one was like the, it was a portable Sega Genesis. I mean, it was kind of portable. It was like fucking carrying around a cinder block. But yeah, this thing would drain batteries within an hour or two. I just remember that Game Gear, man. That Game Gear was awesome, by the way. It was. But it would, you could never, you had to plug it into the wall. You weren't going to do shit with batteries. Like. No, you used to like lay in your bed at night under the covers, mm-hmm. like when everybody was like, when you're supposed to be in bed, and all of a sudden you'd be like, shit's dead. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. yeah for sure. <laughs> all right. So where are we at? Uh, four. Uh, number four. Lamp is uh, wanting uh, everybody to stretch before they do the roundhouse kick to the uh, lock button. <laughs> or what else can you do with the lock button, Uncle Bill? If you don't. <laughs> well, we're already demonetized anyway. So, I mean, you can titty fuck the lock button if you'd like. Or you can Alabama shit, can it? <laughs> Alabama hot pocket. Yeah. Make, you, make, blah, make sure if you're on my channel to sub to these dudes up here if you're not. Yeah, and sub to Born to Be Rad. You can go to Born to Be Rad.com to directly go to that YouTube page just like that. Ooh. Tricky. Um, uh, but yeah, we still have 170 plus people in here. So, that's insane. Um, yeah, we happy Friday the 13th, everybody, and we appreciate you uh hanging with with uh, Born to Be Rad and Dead Pit on Friday the 13th. Well, Bobby, sure. Bobby. We get demonetized for a lot of different reasons, but mostly for for, vul- for vulgarity. So, yeah. Number four is number four. Hell yeah! I mean, deserves to be in the top four, no, no doubt. It's freaking to me. It wasn't my number one, but I mean, it's when you think of a slasher, that's like a for me, that's like a perfect slasher movie. I think it is. Like I completely agree. Just, like it hits everything that you want, like a slasher film to be. So you got Tom Savini doing the makeup effects. You got Corey Feldman in there. You got like Crispin Glover dancing around. It's like it's quirky and it's gory and it's got like some great scene. The the ending scene is my second favorite ending scene of any of the Friday Thirteenth films. I mean, mm. it's just. A really well made movie, and I will say that um, Ted White as Jason in it is a little stiff. I, I guess because he really didn't like. He's probably seventy five years old when he made this damn movie. Like, how old was he? Planet C H H. We have already talked about the remake, and Uncle Bill kind he didn't shit on it proper Uncle Bill style, but I don't think he liked it either. Well, it was number what was it ten? I think. Yeah, it was like I think it was like yeah. your. It was up or there for 10, yeah. just re-signed up to Patreon. Thank you, sir. But uh, part four, man, um, I love part four as well. That was going to be pretty high up on my list. Is I mean, I've seen that movie a ton. I think looking at the whole franchise, part four is probably the quintessential Friday the 13th. It's kind of got so. everything that that series needs. Um, the yeah. look of Jason's really cool too. The, I thought Ted, Ted White's probably top two for me of, of the guys that portrayed Jason over the years. And, um, the only problem I have with part four is Kimberly Beck, Adam Beck's mom. Not, I, I, I think she's kind of a weak final girl. I would have switched Judy Aronson with her 
and have Judy be the final girl because she's the better looking of the two. She doesn't look like a cunt like Kimberly Beck looked like. <laughs> and, oh, uh, yeah, I mean, just to be honest, it's true. Kimberly Beck looks like the cheerleader type that's like, eh, she loves the smell of her own farts and stuff like that. So, yeah, Judy, or how do you say her last name? Judy Aronson. Aronson. She's like the she's like the Joyce Heiser. You know what I mean? Like she's she's not a blonde and she's mm. she's Joyce Heiser. Very that's, nice. that's, she's that's, a that's prime right there. That's right. funny. Yeah. She was somebody that you I'm shocked never did more. Me too, Joyce man. Heiser. What the hell ever happened to her? It's like after that movie, like you never saw her really. No, she did like, not. Did she do American Ranger or something like that? No, uh, did she? I think I she was in one know. of those martial arts movies back around the same time. Yeah, I don't know, but um, she she does something now with like a lot of charities and stuff because you know she's done videos uh, talking about that and stuff. She's kind of out of the the limelight for sure, though. So Kimberly Beck's uncle Jeff passed away, so I should I should apologize. <laughs> God damn it, that wouldn't be her uncle. That'd be more like her brother because she's old too. Uh, but I don't know what else to say about part four though, man. Like it's, yeah, yeah, I, I think everybody likes part four. Maybe El Curly Jaws hates it. Maybe he does. I don't know how you could hate it though, because it's not boring and it's just got like great makeup effects and Corey Feldman like going off and shaving his head and fucking, I don't know. Just yeah. It was definitely Feldman. before, uh, it was before the Michael Jackson stuff. Yeah. He was pre pre Michael Jackson. Well, he did Feldman. this movie the same year he did the uh, Gremlins, and then the yeah, next this is year, like one of his first yeah. movies, yeah, that he ever did. Yeah, the next year he did uh, the Goonies, mm-hmm. which kind of ex- made his you know career explode there for a little while. Can you please explain to me, Garrett? Because you probably know more about Corey Feldman than me. like why does he still do the Michael Jackson shit? Like what? Is the I don't know fascination. I, mean, I, I, I think it's probably uh, maybe uh, dedication to him. I, I don't I don't know for sure why he does it, but I guess it's just part of his gimmick. I mean, maybe now that Michael's dead, he's well, trying to be like the next the next one. I don't know, but um, yeah, it's weird. I actually just finished his book. Um, I've had it a long time, and I just it was a hard read when I bought it when it first came out because you know they get really detailed about a lot of shit with him and and Haim and whatnot. So I, I I put it down for a while and then I just found out it was on audiobook. And n- not only is it on audiobook, but Corey Feldman talk does the 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 audiobook and he does voices for different actors and actresses that he's per- he's talking about and stuff. It's it's really entertaining. So if anybody's interested in learning about his whole career and life and all that stuff, it's it's definitely worth. It's called choreography and you can get it on Audible. I don't um, know. He doesn't if, get uh, too deep into that because it ends before he really gets it gets hard into like what he's doing now. Hmm. Well, obviously Michael Jackson touched Corey in a special way back in the now. He, he says still. never. He said never. He well, said I'm, never. I'm not. Hey, you're thinking dirty, man. I'm just saying he was. They uh, they did they did spend uh, time together. Actually, he actually even said I, that Michael yeah, Jackson special. showed him uh porn at one point. But never, nothing ever. Here's an happened. interesting one for you guys, though, to look up because I I got going <laughs> oh, on no. YouTube down, you know, that YouTube rabbit hole, which all of us have been on, like looking through stuff and everything, right? So, and we're talking about maybe, or I mentioned it was my idea. I don't know if we've really talked about it, doing a uh, lost media episode on famous clips or stuff that was shot that nobody has ever seen that nobody can explain and there's one clip that uh cory feldman is in it was some sort of dance teen show that he did mm-hmm. around the filming or i guess they had finished the filming of dream a little dream in the 90s yep. and there is a clip in the middle of this performance that it's almost like it was accidentally spliced in there there's no reason for that to be in there at all of this woman half naked tied up like she's being tortured or something real quick clip you know what i'm talking about garrett no i mean i know that i know the clip of him i know that i know the clip of him in that in that teen that was the um that was like a 
a kid's, I don't know if that, what the name of it was, but there was clubs that they had in LA around that time where basically like underage child stars would go and hang out and party and stuff. And like, they basically ran the, the, the whole thing. Like people would do performances and they'd have dances and stuff. As far as why they showed that clip in there, I mean, it wasn't a spliced thing that someone did after the fact or. No, I was told it was, it aired uh, and it's like a really quick cut. Mm. So I didn't. I never. I never even knew about it. And and it does not fit with the other shots at all or anything. So there's a big question around. I mean, you could look at this on. It's on YouTube. Big question about what? Who is that girl? What in the hell was that clip? Because this was a a show for teenagers in 1989, hmm. or something like that. It's just very odd. It's it looks like um, it's not professionally shot either. It looks like it was camcorder footage. So. <laughs> very odd I'll, yeah i thought I'll have to check it out odd. but um yeah and uh i see what keggy's saying i was gonna i was gonna bring that up at, at when once we got there yeah. but um yeah yeah we'll get there we're getting there the youtuber next po carta has of course seen it hmm. we like the same sort of shit number three a lot of people on here you said this is going to be my number one you said it's going to be my favorite and he fucking ain't so suck on that my number three is part two. Mm. I really hated this movie for a long time growing up because it's not a Jason film in the traditional sense of the word because it doesn't have like hockey match. And when you're a kid, that's really the only thing you're thinking about. Like when you visualize Jason, you think about the hockey mask. But this is tater sack Jason, and that doesn't exist in this world. But this one has the best pace to me. It has the best ending of any of the Friday 13th film. And it has the best final girl, Amy Steele. Uh, it's got some awesome kills. It basically ripped everything off from uh, Bay of Blood uh, and a lot of Mario Bava work. But it just works somehow or another to me. Like, it's not... It's an exploitation film, but it's not stupid. It never really gets like really stupid. Um, and I, I thought that the the end scene with the uh, Mrs. Voorhees and all that being present, so to speak, was probably my favorite end scene to any of the Friday Thirteenth films. So well, and the yeah. the decapitated head with the candles and everything, and then the end where. Amy Steele's tricking Jason and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So that's just some classic shit. But when I was a kid, I didn't really get part two either. It took, and it's weird because really the first two movies, when I first start got, uh, getting into the franchise and stuff, I never really watched those. I never really wanted to go and watch those. But as I got older and everything, and I watched them more and more, I really, really learned to appreciate the first couple uh, movies. Yeah, Saturn has actually got it pretty close. He says it's got the darkest atmosphere of the whole series. It really does. Like, it really just is. Mm. It's just a really dark kind of, I don't know. I won't say mean-spirited, but some of it is kind of mean-spirited, really. Like, some of the things that happen in it, too. But it's it's the one that kind of really makes you feel uneasy when mm. you watch it still to this day. And it's got, like, a super killer campfire scene in the beginning of it, too. Yeah, dude, I, I I love that part two um, a lot. But the, I think the that, wheelchair scene. Oh, yeah. So killer. <laughs> it's like, that's, what? That's hardcore, man. Yeah. You never see that coming either. Like, I mean, the first time you watch it. I wonder how they shot that. That was a that was a real person in that wheelchair, wasn't it? I it thought was it was a mannequin. mannequin. It looks like a I think mannequin. They, I think they mannequined it up as it was going, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. It looked pretty good. <clears throat> and Amy still, I think, is still literally the my favorite as far as the final girls go mm -hmm. she's one of the very best oh yeah agree oh the only bad part about this movie is uh stu garrett and his name what's so not, ta not talking to you garrett stu uh <laughs> stu, stu i think that's his fucking name stu charno stu charno stu garrett. it must be <laughs> combination <laughs> <laughs> That guy and Garrett. <laughs> wow. Oh, Who's Stu that? Charno, the boyfriend? Yeah. The boyfriend? No, that's the that's the dude that like is the redheaded like 
uh, kind of jokester character that like oh, he's like, oh, just yeah 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 he's in he's in a lot of eighties movies yeah yeah he plays like the same kind of character or whatever he was yeah, in, uh, he's, he's, the, yeah he was I was gonna say guys with uh Heiser. he's a lizard yeah, yeah he's yeah, the yeah, lizard yeah. dude in that yeah. yeah. Um, no, I love part two I love I love the baghead I'm still to this day though I know we mention we mention this every time we bring Stu Charno up he's the only guy. In the history of the original Dead Pit Radio Show, oh, this is that true. wanted money to be interviewed, Stu Charno. You know, was he in? Um, him. maybe you guys, maybe he wasn't. There's a cool movie from the '80s called Hunk. I don't know if you guys know that one. No, no, Hunk. It's pretty cool. It's like a comedy. I think he's like the dork, and then what happens is, um, something happens where all of a sudden he wakes up and he's like a like a muscular, like good looking guy. Um. I don't know if anybody in the chat saw that. I, I it's one of those movies that it hasn't seen the light of day. I think since DVD, but uh, it's always one that I've hoped would get a, a Blu-ray. It's a pretty cool '80s movie, like a teen comedy type movie. I don't think I've ever seen that. I haven't either. Not at all. Someone mentioned the whole thing with Steve Dash. That was one of like my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite interviews from yeah uh, back in the day, talking about Origin Land and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's some classic shit. Warren and Gillette is a kind of a douchebag. We met him. I mean, I, we never did any interview him or anything, but he's totally like one of those guys that you can tell he's just full of shit. So there's only two left. <laughs> <laughs> I won't put it on there. You guys are off <laughs> control. <laughs> you guys are off control. The fuck? <laughs> no. Hey guys, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh no. Okay. <laughs> Do you ever get shit like this on your chat, Garrett? Is this just us that gets That's, I think it's mostly just you. Yeah, I don't I get too much, too much of this. I get some of it, but not much. People like right. trying to like make us pop or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <sighs> so number two, number two, uh, number two, is the original. Um. And for one reason only, and that's Betsy Palmer. I still think that Betsy Palmer's performance in this movie is one of the best villain performances in any horror film. I think it's severely underrated to this day. I think if you go back and watch that movie, it's not very good until she shows up. And when she shows up, like, it's pretty amazing. Like, she just mm -hmm. absolutely, like, just chews the scenery and everything around her. And I love... I love her role in the film. And keep in mind, too, when this was made, there's a lot of really, really cool stuff that Savini did that nobody had ever really seen before, like the arrow, you know, through the neck scene and all that. Like, he he created a lot of effects that had never really been seen before for this movie. And I think that once you get about midway through it, the first half is kind of just like so-so. Mm. Um, it's really good. I like the whole movie at this point. I think... <clears throat> The vibe, like the atmosphere in this one is pretty thick, like the the setting and everything. And I think Crystal Lake was never scarier than this movie. Like the, the lake itself and that atmosphere, you know, uh, Camp Noby Bosco in New Jersey or wherever the hell it is, that time period, man, and then the the opening scene, the kumbaya scene, that's creepy as shit. And as a yeah. kid, it didn't work for me at all. I don't know what happened, but man, like, I think I really started falling in love with the first movie when the deep, the first DVD came out, like back probably 20 years ago at this point, 20, you know, two, 2000, I guess, 99, 2000, whenever that first DVD came out and I started watching it again. I was like, hell, there is something to this movie. And I really started warming up to it. Mm -hmm. I was always a fan of the first. And I know a lot of people, for whatever reason, didn't like it or don't like it. Uh, it always worked for me. And I think it's because I had my uncle to kind of prep me for what was going on. And I kind of watched them backwards. I think I watched... I know I watched three first. And I know he, he showed me one and two. But I don't know if I went backwards or I went three, one, two. I forget how it worked, but... Um, it just sh sh her performance in this is just amazing. So to me, as a kid, knowing the story and like anything else, I think Jason not being in it, 
it's fine because I think it just really builds to the rest of the franchise. And, you know, it kind of gives you, um, it, it kind of makes you feel better about two and all that stuff when they continue it on because of the way this one kind of ends and whatnot. But, um, yeah, she just kills it, man. Kills it. Yeah. There's a, there's a scene in it where like, because, you know, the first time that you watch it, if anybody can remember, like, I can't remember the first time I watched the original Friday the 13th. That's how long yeah. it's been. Mm-hmm. But you got to imagine that, like, it's a murder mystery, right? So people really didn't know at the time, like, what, who the killer was. Or, and they, I mm-hmm. guess, expected it to be, like, a guy based on what was going on. And there's that scene where she's talking to uh, Adrian King. And you start to like realize that she's fucking crazy. And that's such a yeah. well acted scene because she's talking to her and she's like, you know, kind of petting the side of her head and she's <laughs> saying something to her, like, you know, um, he was my son and, you know, he wasn't a very good swimmer. And then when the way she says that and smiles and then jerks back the smile really, really quick is mm-hmm. amazing. Just go back and watch that one scene. Mm-hmm. Where she says he wasn't a very good swimmer, it's it's outstanding. But being a little kid and seeing that head decapitation scene was like yeah. freaking something you had never. I had never seen anything like that before in my whole life, and I, it's it stuck with me ever since. Like that was the first time I ever saw anything where like a head came off, um, you know, a body or whatever. And I just remember it, I me mean, just seeing it rolling on the beach and just kind of being in, in awe of what I saw. Um, I don't remember how old I would have been though. And what a lot of people don't realize is, too, in 1980, when this thing came out, this was a massive box office hit. It was huge. It was huge. Yeah, huge. like it's still the highest grossing one. I saw some sort of chart about that. Like, I guess it's adjusted for inflation yeah. or something like that. But, yeah. $550,000 budget. It made $59.8 million in 1980. Yeah. Um, I think it opened the same weekend as The Shining, and it kicked the fuck out of The Shining. <laughs> that's hilarious. If you think about it, that's yeah. Yeah. So um, the the 4K though, that's one thing that I think it came out since the last time we did one of mm-hmm. these ranking shows. Have you guys picked up the the 4K yet and checked it out no. or anything? It's gotten kind of mixed reviews. No, I have not. <clears throat> I um. I probably will at some point. I think I'm just kind of waiting for something better with it. Like, are they going to do a full set? Are they not? I mean, I, I don't know uh, if I can get it really cheap. Maybe I'll grab it. But I, like you said, I've heard mixed things about it um, for sure. So I'm just kind of curious on what you said. You thought it looked fine, right? But you watched, did you watch the physical or like the digital? No, code I, or whatever? I had the voodoo code um, mm. and I checked it out and I thought it, I thought it looked great. But is it enough? Like, I didn't watch it back to back with the 4K remastered Blu ray. Is it that big of a difference to where you're really even going to notice? I don't know, but I thought it looked really good. I will. Well, the, the one that what I else? Saw. What else is interesting is like we talked about the Kevin Bacon and the effects and how huge that was for back then. It was like mind blowing. But I feel like the better the quality that we get, the worse that looks. True. Like that effect really doesn't play well now with like 4K and Blu-ray. Like it looks really bad. Um, where like back in VHS days and, and when it was on TV and stuff, like I mean, it freaking looked fantastic. But now with like all that elements of being higher, I just feel like it really pulls back on some of that kind of stuff for for this movie. And I really haven't really noticed that with many other movies that it that the special effects look that bad. Cause it literally looks like a different head on that body. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can tell the more, the problem is the more that they get into the 4k part of it, the more right. you can see the blending isn't <clears throat> done, you know, Correct. I mean, they couldn't do it exactly precisely. And the more, the more that that kind of pulls into that, then the more you can see the effect, but yeah, it's kind of better. So that's why just I think it. like it's cool to watch the 4k, but it pulls it back a little bit on some of the quality when it comes to that. Well, it's interesting because like all of these movies, you got all the Halloween movies out in 4K, but only the first Friday the 13th movie. And I don't even know if there's a huge demand for for the movies in 4K. I mean, I guess there is, but I couldn't imagine like maybe part four would look really cool in 4K, but all the other ones are just really cheaply. A lot of them are really cheaply made. Like I couldn't imagine a 
Friday the 13th part seven. We're, we're very close to 200 people on here and it'd make me really happy. <laughs> if we got to, it'd make so, his day. Share the, uh, it would make yeah. his Friday the 13th. This would yeah. be the first time outside of a vinegar syndrome stream that we've, we've ever got over that. So. We appreciate oh, it. We just lost three people when you started that shit. <laughs> you son of a bitch, we could have done it. Damn. Share um, it, like it, to subscribe to shit. both channels. But something else, though, that we can talk about the Crystal Lake series. <laughs> oh, no. Which is coming up, I guess, what is it, next year, possibly, or something? Um, how do you think, like, are they going to have it set in the 70s? Um, like, yeah, I think so. Okay, I think so it's gonna not... follow Pamela for a while and it's gonna see young Jason, and I think it's gonna kind of take off from there. Kind of almost like I'm thinking like Bates Motel, and then it's gonna kind of roll with stuff later. I think that's where I think it's gonna go, and I and I'm actually intrigued by that to be honest. Well, best case scenario would be Bates Motel. I mean. That's I think that's the most successful one so far. Yeah. Um, I think that they if they really wanted to go all out with it and do it right, why don't you take it back up to Camp Noby Bosco and film it there? Like I, I don't know if, how difficult that would be, but that town up there still looks the same. Um, a lot of that stuff in the downtown area of what's the name of the town? Blairstown. Yeah. Blairstown, New Jersey. It still looks yeah. very similar to what it did back then. And I just think it'd be fun. It'd be a cool connection to that first movie to to go all out and, and at least do some, you could do some wide shots. You don't have to shoot there all the time, but ha- kind of a cool connection they could have. With I agree. Movie. And that's all still pretty much like even the center of town is like very, it's not that much different as as it was then like you know because there's a tell. there's a ton of people that have done those kind of like location videos for that and it still looks pretty much the same really mm-hmm. uh, so yeah so right i now. mean if you can i mean we're down to number one you got to know what it is by now right that's like that was what i assumed it was going to be yeah well listen i'm sorry that i could not surprise okay. y'all but the truth of the matter is it's the best fucking one it's the best one for a lot of different reasons. The number one is because it's got the most memorable characters in it. I can name you off five or six characters from this movie, like right off the bat. I couldn't do that for any of the other Friday the 13th. So it has the most memorable characters. It has the funnest kind of depiction of the characters. It's got some of the best kills. And it doesn't ever take itself really seriously. And it's an exploitation style film. Mm -hmm. So everything that I like about this series is kind of encapsulated in this one movie. And plus it's got like some really cool, like songs, like original soundtrack stuff in it as well. Uh, The man with no life in his eyes, different stuff like that. I don't know. What else you going to say about part five? Death. I don't know if you mentioned that the death scenes in part five, I think overall, like top mm. to bottom, there's they're the best. I mean, there may be some better ones in like part four, but kill after kill after kill, part five is kind of hard to beat. Come on, Garrett, put over part five. Do it. I mean, it's good. It's not. It's not. My oh favorite. fuck this uh, shit! You know, I I think that I I don't like Tommy Jarvis in that movie at all. I never did. I thought he was the worst. I thought. Matthews was way better. I thought that yeah. Elman was way better. I just never could get into that Tommy Jarvis. And so that always kind of threw me off a little bit. I just never liked him as a character. But I mean, yeah, it's got good characters in it. But um, you know, you can't you can't that, real that quick, guy at the beginning real, now, he's he he touched the Corys, man. He did. How, how, how can I get behind that? He did, he did that. But also though, real quick. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Ooh. Baby, ooh, baby. Mm. That's all you didn't know. <laughs> I remember. No, I mean, I was... think it's. I think it's good. Um, I think I probably. I must have ranked this. I think probably six. I think I did. There's That's... another three words for you, Garrett. Debbie Savory. <laughs> <laughs> uh... 
he knew what he was doing. At that point in time, she may have been the best looking girl that was ever in a Friday the 13th movie. It was like, it just I, like, I don't know. It's almost like watching for, for a 10 year old kid. It was almost like watching an X rated movie or something, seeing her. Oh God. This is probably my favorite. Hugs. Probably my favorite quote from this movie too is right here. Good job, Mark. Uh, he put it up where she's, uh, Ethel's like, uh, <laughs> I got a bomb on me. I'm going to blow us all up. I warn you, fella. <laughs> My final word. You big mm. deal, no. <laughs> <laughs> Vince what? is pissed again, see? Oh, Lord, no. Well, we got a super chat here, too, from Brandon. Tommy <laughs> was doing Kung Fu in uh, part five. He was, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I will give you credit. What's his name? Mark Shepard? Is that his? John Shepard. Yeah. He didn't do anything. John Shepard, yeah. Game over. He's not the best actor in the world. And I don't think he had like an especially great time doing this film either. But and then the other thing people always bitch about, of course, is that it's not Jason or whatever. But that's mm-hmm. dumb. I need to stop doing that. Well, that was silly. a huge thing, though. I mean, this was kind of the black shape of the franchise, much like Halloween Three uh, was as well. And it took many years for Friday the Thirteenth to Part Five to kind of find its fan base but yeah i mean i would definitely say overall it is one of the more popular uh in the franchise now which is same thing with halloween 3 mm-hmm. true mm-hmm. i'm not sure what else to say about part five because we've done whole commentaries over this movie we've but... done three different commentaries over the years and all three of them are on our patreon page who the fuck are you? What the we, fuck do you want? We originally. I guess <laughs> That's it, another great line. We're on our best behavior and recorded a commentary for the special edition of part five for Paramount. And they still didn't fucking put it on there. We were being no. nice. Now they listen to her voices and they're like, no, we can't do that. People won't know what the hell they're talking about. Thank you. Tales from the tape. Four ninety nine. Super duper, super duper chat. I don't understand what that is. Is it a super chat or a super sticker or a super soaker? We need, I want to make it. I want to put it on here and record it. Super, super, super chat and play that. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a great idea. I love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think Uncle Bill's like, I don't know. I think our rankings is going to be a little bit different, Uncle Bill. I mean, I would have probably imagined, yeah. Just a little bit. But um, yeah, so uh, we appreciate everybody uh, tuning in. If anybody has anything else, I mean, I guess we do have a little bit of time left. I can't well, believe he threw three as high as high on that list, as far back on that list. I still can't. I just can't, I just don't like it anymore. Like, I mean, for a time you know, when you're there. done this, I want you to sit down and you're going to rewatch it right now. <laughs> Actually, you know what's funny is doing these shows. Like, I'm going to go watch one right now. I don't know which one, um, but I'm going to probably pop one in. Was part five the one the mayor says with the two leather daddies? <laughs> they just wanted to get to the gay bar, but they met, <laughs> met Jason. Yeah, that was part five. That guy was like in there trying, come on, motherfucker, rat a tat tat tat. Start the fucking car. What was the guy's name? He kept saying his name too. Um, Vinny. Vinny, yeah. Come on, Vinny. You fucking pussy. And he gets a flare in his fucking jaw, right in the jaw. Yeah. About <laughs> Melanie, uh, Melanie Kinnaman, I think, was a great final girl, too. Man, she yeah. was in fucking Louisa, she was. And I, didn't even Halloween. Go. I didn't even go, but the yeah, the wet blouse and everything. And then you had Reggie the Reckless and his little red sweatsuit little red hoodie. Yeah, yeah, was it a we hoodie had, or was it a sweatsuit? It was a crew neck, I don't remember. I think it was a red hoodie, yeah, red pants, red hoodie. The uh, mask for part five I always liked as well. It it had the the blue chevrons instead of the red. And even as a kid, I was like, that's a cool looking mask for some reason. Mm-hmm. I always thought so. Also, the yeah. part with, uh, you know, Roy coming and like, get, get out here and get your hands dirty or whatever. <laughs> There's some killer just like, yeah, see the- like an arm is on the guy's back <laughs> laying. <laughs> well, you know what, though? I like. 
even with that, the cover art for the VHS is is fantastic with that other mask. And yeah, you know, it's called this... the New Blood. It's got a different mask on the cover art. Like, you know, you kind of, you kind of, they kind of told you what you were going to get without really telling you what you're going to get. You know, um, but posters... I have the replica of that mask on from the cover as well on the, uh, of that VHS. It's a real cool. It's like one of those old school like Cooper masks or whatever from back in the eighties. The theatrical posters for this movie sucked ass though. Like. I don't know yeah. why, but they were doing that, like where they would just ride out. Yeah, like hey, like a it, phrase. Yeah, Jason and, still haunts you. You're not alone. Or yeah, something. so this, this cool. is the the but other yeah, side. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. not really that. Like I don't know why would somebody go to the movie theater? Like why would that make somebody want to go see the movie? I don't know. They did that for part four and five for some reason. The rest they of the posters are all. Well, why why does Dream Factory not put the other image on there? no idea i'm not the sure the just image neca used that for yeah that's the, that's the best image i think by oh, far yeah. yeah and they did a lamp uh a promo lamp which that thing is oh, like crazy so crazy rare mm -hmm. but um, i remember looking at that way back in the day on ebay and it was reasonable at the time but i just didn't i think it was like 60 bucks or something 50 bucks 60 bucks and i didn't pull the trigger and now i wish i would have because that thing is really really hard to get now i gotta say too because i think like the early days of doing the dead pit show we may have been the only people that were defending par five so i don't even think we were defending halloween three at this no. point but part five we were throwing out there it's fucking great everybody needs to go back and check it out and everything but like over the years yeah a lot more people have really warmed up to it which all you gotta do is watch it i mean who the big argument was, well, it's not really Jason. That's fucking stupid. Like, it's a guy in a hockey mask. Who gives a shit? Jason mm -hmm. is a fucking character. <laughs> you know, it's still a guy killing people in a hockey mask. I still think it's the most entertaining of all the Friday the 13th films. Like, you could watch it with, like, a crowd of people, and it would go over every time. It's mm -hmm. just that this is that kind of fun style of movie that they don't really do like those anymore. Jack Frost said that part five is like Halloween ends. Uncle Bill, do you agree with that? Yeah, that's fine. Whatever he wants to believe. <laughs> Jerry <laughs> L always <laughs> loves part five. <laughs> Lucio Inferno. Wow. Redemption for Dracula 3D for giving Friday five respect. Yeah, he's, he's never lit up on the Dracula 3D thing. And I never will either because it's not that bad. I'm talking about uh, Lucio Inferno. He he won't oh. uh, let you live that down at all. Oh, I Thank still believe for the, for the still real to me, damn it. Super, super, super chat. So let's see. Here's here's a question for you from Bobby. Why didn't Roy Burns just kill the guy who killed his son instead of everyone? Else? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean he vic never dies does he just, no he he just gets arrested he's arrested <laughs> yeah, i never even just, thought of that yeah he I've gets taken off he's like the only one that doesn't die I kind of like, <laughs> i've seen that movie a million times and i never really <laughs> thought of that yeah they just put him in a fucking cop car and he goes to jail yeah He's free now. <laughs> He's uh, fine. He posted mail. Like, do a fan film now. Vic's Revenge. <laughs> yeah. He escapes yeah. prison. That is so funny. He's like still sitting in prison right now. <laughs> That'd be an awesome film where Jason like hunt, like hunts him down in the prison, <laughs> tries to like get in and kill him because he's like the last guy left. Yeah. You know, I guess it wouldn't be. It would be Roy. That, yeah, when he was yeah. talking about Corey Feldman earlier. Corey Feldman is briefly in. The beginning mm -hmm. scene of uh, part mm -hmm. five. Yep. Dominic Braska, who plays Joey, didn't he call him out in that documentary as being one of Corey Haim's abusers mm -hmm. or something yeah, like that? He did. Mm -hmm. so yeah. So that's that's a weird connection too. So they met. Um, <clears throat> they met there, and then they were on another movie together. I think Corey Feldman didn't know many people on that movie, and because he remembered him from this movie they he kind of took him under his wing like and i'm trying to think what other movie this guy was in that feldman was in <clears throat> maybe like license to drive or something I, I don't remember something else he was in 
and uh, that's where they kind of all met again. So yeah, I don't. But, I mean, really... is this guy, he's is he um is he in prison now or no? No, he's dead. He died. Oh, he did. Oh, that's he... right. That's what it yeah. was. Yeah. I'm thinking of who am I thinking of though? I'm thinking of somebody else. Oh, the guy from Return of the Living Dead, right? Brian Peck, wasn't that his name? That's what I'm thinking. Okay, he's yeah. he's the other guy. I'm, I'm getting it mixed up, but yeah, yeah he this was guy actually too. doing conventions and stuff for years and years, and just recently kind of went away. I think mm -hmm. he was working for like Nickelodeon and. I was getting ready to say like ever, he was yeah. the he was the guy that was a writer along with that other guy who I never can remember his name, but got like on all those iCarly and all those shows like that, that got accused mm -hmm. of doing all that stuff. Yep. So how would Roy not know that Vic killed his son? I'm sure it was like in a local paper. Does he well, not I mean, read he showed paper? up at the scene. I mean, yeah. They, yeah, I mean, don't you think one of the cops there, right there would have told him? Like, well, he was sitting in the back of the cop car, right? When they were wheeling the body. Yeah. So he had to have known. He like, didn't care. Like, didn't even ask questions. Maybe Roy killed him off camera, according to the mayor. Kills Vic by strangling him and covers up the murder, making it look like Vic hung himself in the cell. See, they could have easily done that. Like, I guess they just didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. I Honestly, after meeting Danny Steinman, I don't think that he really gave a shit about the plot, you know, the continuity of the plot or anything like that. You know what's great, and I think someone brought it up today. Do you guys have the documentary the for um, what is it called there? Uh, Crystal Lake memor memories. memories of Crystal Lake. Yeah, that's a freaking great documentary. It's going breaking down all the movies. Do you have that? Yeah, the one yeah. that's like isn't like well, four or five hours or yeah, something. Like that. Yeah, Feldman like hosts at the beginning or whatever. It's it's really good. Yeah, it's way better than his name was Jason. That was like the biggest letdown uh, of all time. Yeah, that thing was yeah. a piece of shit. I hated that when it yeah. came out. <laughs> it sucked. The Elm Street uh, one's good that they did as well. That's a real good that one. That one was almost too long. Like in that damn thing, like Elm Street is really long. It's like I think it's like two discs or something. Yeah. It's like but fun. um if you guys haven't checked that out, I don't know how available it still is. I, maybe it's on some of the new Blu-rays. I don't know if it's like as a special feature, but it's uh it's fantastic. Here's another interesting thing. I don't know if we've mentioned mm. it. Steinman was originally mm -hmm. like keyed in to direct Last House on the Left mm -hmm. Part 2 in the 80s, and it never came to be. Well, that's the perfect freaking guy to do the sequel for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. For those people that don't know, too, he directed Savage Streets, which is an amazing exploitation mm -hmm. film you should watch. Oh, Did yeah. Jim Belushi pass away? I don't know, man. Just hmm. that would be a. There's a lot of. There's been a lot of like celebrity deaths and stuff lately. So. Uh, every day. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know about that, uh, Robert Long. But uh, hopefully, it's not the case. But it um, maybe it happened. Maybe it didn't. Who's to say? You know. Yeah. We, yeah, it doesn't. Man, I, I don't see anything right now. We appreciate everybody tuning in to the, the, I mean, these shows are always fun. I always look forward to, cause I don't have to prepare for anything. I've seen all these movies a million times. Yeah. You know, there's not much prep involved in doing these and it's cool to just bullshit and listen to you crazy fuckers and chat <laughs> and everything. Um, there's but, some good ones tonight. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we got some more, you know, if, if your uh, love for Jason is, uh, you know, if you're still into the Friday the 13th madness after today, Sunday the 15th will be your lucky day on it, Uncle Bill. Sunday the 15th, it was when we get to revisit the classic that I just ranked like number, what, eight or nine on my list, Jason Lives. Yeah, you're going to like it again this time. No, I'm not. I ain't going to like it. It's got core you, in it. It's a killer. Dude. You might <laughs> warm up to it, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uncle Bill. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, Did you ever play the game, the Friday uh, 13th game? Have you guys ever played that? Yeah, the video game. Actually, do you what's what system are you running on that? I used to I don't even know if it was PlayStation that I was I playing it on. Played. I don't think I was I don't think we were even like talking at all when that was a thing. Like I was playing no. with like Piz and like 
bunch of other people, but um, Christian just got a PlayStation 4, and he's been messaging me if we wanted to start playing, and I'm like, I'd love to play again. I, I loved that game. I think uh, that somebody said, like, here recently, they something they happened with that game. The, well, the reason the game kind of failed is because with the lawsuit, they had to shut everything down, so they couldn't update it anymore, and, like, you're supposed to get you know, Jason X and all this other stuff, the spaceship, and they basically just couldn't update it. So people stopped playing because it was just like the same four levels over and over again. But I just always thought it was fun when you just had like a bunch of people. One was Jason and the councils were trying to get away and all that stuff. And yeah. um, if we can get it to work and if, if you still have all that stuff set up, it'd be awesome to kind of get on there. Um, but what's funny is that Tommy Jarvis says all the same stuff in that game he does. <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> Jason, come <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah. You hear him throughout the game, like the whole time, like yelling down to Jason. It's funny. Oh, <laughs> so, um, um, yeah, we're going to be doing that at 10 p.m. on Sunday night. Uh, watch along for Friday the 13th, part six. No, I watched part six not too long ago, actually. I think I was showing it to Sarah for the first time. Sarah liked it, Uncle Bill. She thought yeah. it, was funny. it ain't no count. And you got anything planned coming up on the Born to Be Rad channel? I know you you got a surprise coming up. I don't know if you want to mention what it is. You kind of talked about it last show a little bit, I think. Uh, a couple things going on. Um, we've got, obviously, the movie room tour is the big one. That's the one everybody kind of wanted to see. It's filmed. It's it's. I'm actually going to help edit it tomorrow um, for a little bit. And uh, hopefully that will be out before the end of the month. It should be. Um, this past week... Uh, we recorded the first episode of the Rad Pack podcast. Um, we're going to drop the pilot next week um, on video form because we're still going to send it in to make sure it gets approved and stuff. And then it'll be on audio. And if everybody's, you know, we definitely want feedback on it because it's a different format than what you're used to. And um, then from there, if everybody is cool with it, we're probably just going to keep running it uh, as its own thing. Um, and then as far as other videos I have, uh, a review coming out uh, this weekend for Last American Virgin. So the the new Blu-ray just got released. And uh, if you guys haven't seen that movie, I definitely recommend picking up this new Blu-ray because it's it's great. It's just a great movie. And I don't know if the Arrow version is still available or not. That's what I had before as well. Um, but those are the ones I think that I've got uh, coming up that are set in stone. And I've got some Rad Company episodes just working out some dates that are coming as well. But those those are the big ones, I think. What was that guy's name? He was actually in what, like part four? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the kid from um, Last American Virgin was in part four. Yeah, yep. yeah. I can't think of his name, but yeah. Very cool. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, we're gonna have some reviews coming up in the near future as well. I think Possessor, the Brandon Cronenberg movie, was one that we were requested. And there's another one I had to look up because I could not remember the name. And I don't even know what this is. Does anybody in the chat know a movie called Heaven Knows What from 2014? Mm -mm. That was another request. No. Really? Yeah, I don't know what that is, though. I haven't even looked it up. I've never heard of that, man. Heaven Knows What from 2014. You know, one I have heard of, though, is Heaven Can Wait. Heaven Can Wait. Heaven Can Wait. We can't How sing about? in harmony like old times. Uncle no, it'd work. be great if we could. Heaven isn't too far away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody in the chat knows what that movie is either. I don't know what it's not. Jack about, Frost yeah. says it might be a Kevin Sorbo movie. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? We I never talked not. about Kevin Sorbo on the show. I, I mean, for good reason. <laughs> I want to fucking talk about Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> <laughs> turkey leave turkey leave that's so funny God. all right so uh yeah man thank everybody in the chat and everything and definitely go over to both channels like both videos subscribe to both channels it helps out quite a bit I'm trying to get geared up to the 2k almost yeah. there i mean as of today i think i i had like uh i was at like 30 i needed like 31 uh, sub so so we should there. be able to do that get wet movie yeah. uh, wet movie on here spread some uh rad love if you will and uh everybody you know subscribe that hasn't so we can get him yeah it should the way it usually goes i'll be there by the end of the month i think so um i appreciate it for sure anybody who, who subs over to there 
because like I said, I got some stuff coming and uh, always more. Those are just the ones that I always have that I have booked already. But it's always cool stuff coming. We always make some make it work. Yeah. So we've got a lot of other cool stuff happening and everything. Not really sure exactly what that is yet. But hey, we we had a busy week this week for mm. sure. We're not even done yet. Um, but the commentary things are always fun. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, thank you guys for for joining in with us and stuff. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been cool. And I, if for all those that didn't like my list, well, I just make your own damn list. Like who gives a shit what I like and what I don't People like? Love the rankings, though, man. God. You know, we gotta do it. You gotta do it. God, everyone says it's time to get wet, bitch. <laughs> i can hear the song in my head but uh yeah guys we appreciate it everybody stay tuned born to be rad.com dead pits on patreon.com and dead pits.com give us the thumbs up Up you butts. like subscribe and if you subscribe here's something else you can do once you subscribe you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a f if you do. I want you to. I want you to. <laughs> I don't let's, care. let's keep our community growing here on I, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, they need to do that, pal. No, don't you yeah. dare touch it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And click that bell. Hey, everyone. It's Oak Early Jaws. We got some great shirts for you. We got Faces of Death Part 2. We got creepy stories to tell in Kentucky. The Colonel would approve. We also got DeadPit.com. We got DeadPit Radio with the little fucking DeadPit dude on there. We got It Never Ends, a Halloween spoof parody of the new movie. We got It at Night. We got the Rad Pack, Uncle Rad himself. It just gets better and better. So go on and get you some shirts over at Team Public. It just gets better and better, bulls. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Deadpit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows and fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears started only one dollar.